And there we are. We're live. Debbie, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. Very well. <laughs> My God, that is so the truth. <laughs> you absolutely are. You absolutely are. Well, guys, I want to introduce this incredible human being. I mean, in terms of Debbie's achievements, we'll get into that in a few minutes. But uh, I'm just really excited. I'm just really excited to share your story and what you've actually done. But let's wind back the clock a little bit. So four months ago, if you could let us know, first of all, what were you struggling with, Debbie? What was going on in your life that you just weren't, well, weren't happy with? Where do I start? <laughs> um, mostly how I looked, but more so how it made me feel. Um, I felt sluggish. I felt too large for the type of work that I do. Um, it, it made it difficult for me to accomplish as much as I wanted during a day. Um, it made me feel like I didn't want to be in photographs. So much of what you share in your video clips that I think that's one thing that resonated with me with, with the first time I saw it on Facebook group was, yeah, that's me. And that's been me for a very, very long time. So I was just frustrated with um, all the attempts that I've done, that I had done, and, and not, I hadn't totally lost hope, but I was getting to the point, like, what's the point? Um, I could be, not that this is something to brag on, I could be the queen of quick fixes, weight loss, lose some real fast, get bored with the whole thing, can't, I can't keep this up, and then go back, and then it's the same old roller coaster, lose a bit, gain it back plus more, lose some, gain it plus, and, and that was going on for a long, long time. Why did you try? You mentioned quick fixes. Which ones did you, did you actually give a go? <laughs> About the only, well, it might be easier to, to give you the short list of what I didn't try. Um, I never did Weight Watchers, um, but um, beach body Makeover, um, uh, years ago, it would be like the whole slim fast, you know, drinking shakes, um, even uh, isogenics, um, again, shakes and meal replacements and things like that. Um, yeah, pretty much, you name it, I tried it. And, and it worked. They all worked. I seemed to be able to stick to something for a few weeks and, you know, you get to see a little bit weight loss. But um, as I recall, I didn't have a lot more energy. I didn't feel like I could keep this up forever. I enjoy food too much to be drinking <laughs> shakes and meal replacements for the rest of my life. That, that just, there was no satisfaction in that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically if it was out there and I thought it was feasible and I thought, oh, I could afford it or whatever for a while. And that was the mindset. I'll try this. And again, it would work for a bit, but not long term. And with that, I suppose the things that bother me the most is the fact that if you can't have a meal with the people that you care about, it's mm -hmm. just something that we'd all should be able to enjoy. You should be able to enjoy sitting down, having a meal, going to a restaurant. It's why the idea of just moving to shakes, well, for me, I know straight away it is not sustainable. But no. What prompted you to get in touch? I mean, what was it in particular about your current situation that made you think this has to change? What was, what was your lowest point? Uh, lowest point was, of course, we're in COVID and in Canada, it was it's locked down one after the other after the other and they open it up and they close it again. So very frustrating. Um, I live on my own. So I am in control of what I buy, what I make. Um, it's not like I have to prepare meals for others, but look, because I was, I just felt alone. Um, I wouldn't say depressed or melancholy or anything, but I was just alone. I couldn't see my friends. I could still go out and do what I do. Um, it didn't prevent me from doing that for the most part, but it was still, everything was just restrictive. And I felt like I wasn't, I felt powerless because I didn't think I could do anything about it. Mm. Um, so yeah, the concept of finally seeing family when things open up and being at the weight I was and the 
mental condition I was, that was not, I didn't anticipate that. I didn't, I didn't want it to happen the way I was. And then my beautiful daughter, Kate, <laughs> was on the program and I started seeing changes in her, not so much physically, although they were there, but more dramatically was in her mindset and her attitude and her outlook and um, just he, even though they were away, um, just on occasion hearing her mention it or she wasn't she wasn't trying to recruit me. I would I had to dig for for answers. Um, but then she said, well, if you know, if you want to have a look, here's the link and and watch this on Facebook and and that was it. Something about watching through that, hearing comments, seeing how many people, um, and the whole concept that this is not, this isn't, you know, take the next six weeks, lose weight so you can do this or go there or travel here or buy that or whatever. It was, no, there's no time constraint. It's just changes that you make because they're better for you and ultimately for the people around you. It's funny you say that because I've had people ask for support in terms of weight loss for a holiday or to do a parachute jump or a bungee jump mm -hmm. or for a wedding day, all very, um, well, incredible and, of course, exciting times of your life. But I'll only work with someone if they're committed to maintaining it afterwards because I don't want someone to get there and then all of a sudden feel deflated with regaining it because if you regain it, there's only so many times you can do it before yeah. A, you damage your metabolism, or B, you just think, well, maybe I can't do it. And we have self-doubt then. And and look, did you ever feel that? Did you ever feel yourself that perhaps it couldn't be done? Had you ever started to accept your weight as to where it was? Or or did you always feel that something you could address eventually? Or what do you think, Debbie? After so many times of succeeding and then failing, you start to wonder if it's worth the effort because everything that's worthwhile is has an effort you've got to put mm. energy and time and thinking energy into it so um i hadn't i had as i said i hadn't totally given up hope um it's kind of the mindset where you you know well let's try it, it was let's try it but this was different it was um, I think the whole concept of it being just a lifestyle change and having the support and the accountability, that's the big thing for me. Um, and, and making changes that are, are ultimately going to benefit me, but going to benefit my grandchildren. I got three of them running around here in the, in the house today, and it's nice to be able to keep up with them and to be able to plan to do things with them, to think about going to the beach. And yeah, I could actually wear a bathing suit and go in the water and swim with them instead of standing on the beach and just hollering at them, right? So those are, that changes your life. And that's what I was looking for. That's massive, like, that is absolutely huge. I mean, what you just mentioned is just you're able to not just be the spectator or be in the background or the one taking right. the photographs, you're the one who's actually actively involved. And that's huge. I mean, so important. <laughs> and speaking of which, what have you achieved, Debbie? What <laughs> have you achieved? Well, you hear it a lot and it's true. I mean, you start out because the weight is the big thing and changing that aspect of you. But with all the other training, uh, I think the only reason that I've been able to keep doing it is just the change in mindset. Things like instead of seeing food as something to do or to food as something that's going to alleviate another problem, um, food is, is fuel and it it doesn't, it changes the way I grocery shop or, and the way I prepare food because it's not like I have to make anything special. Um, I've, I'm aware you have to be conscious of what you're putting into a recipe and, you know, the macros and balancing those, but those are all things you learn. And I think that's the biggest change. The other huge change for me is as active, I, I was a gym rat, not weightlifting workout in the gym, but sports gym rat 
And if there was something going on, I would get up at 6 a.m. and walk to high school or, you know, and I wouldn't be home till after dark and eating supper after the family had finished. And, but that was fun. That's what I, that's what I basically I went to school because there was a gym. <laughs> The, the classes help, but I went to school for the gym. So I, I've been, I've been active and everything, but I've never, ever done the whole weight room workout thing, running, even, even walking. Yeah. Um, but the whole weight lifting thing, when I first started out, I, I really, I can say I hated it. I really did. I hated it. The thought of the whole bands and rolling out the mat and putting indoor shoes on and it seems it seems strange but that was just a lot for my brain to handle to want to do it but now <laughs> I will peek ahead at what's coming up in the next um, exercise and some of some of what I see uh, scares me or I dread but most of it I'm anticipating to see if you know, wow, this is week two of that set of exercises. Maybe I can go up to the next band and, you know, give that a shot. So I'm starting to set, you know, some of those goals for myself, which is also something totally foreign to me. So you're getting stronger um, as well. You obviously move up the bands. Yeah. Well, sometimes I move up the band and I get through four reps and go, mm, no. <laughs> Not yeah. quite, not quite ready for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not quite, but um, but it works. It's a goal to go to. And then, excuse me, no. Bring and, then, and then, and um, then, of course, I mean, the weight loss sure helps. I've got bags of clothes to give to the donation store when they open, <laughs> and I can get them back. And getting up early, just it, it's a ton of it's a ton of changes. Just How much a, weight have you lost? How much weight? Um, it's, it's approaching 24 kilograms. My God. <laughs> that is colossal, Debbie. Col uh, and I want you to stop yeah. for a second and take credit there on what you've achieved. <laughs> Just you, nobody else. You, you've done that. 24 kilograms. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of kilometers. I need a new pair of running shoes. <laughs> Oh my god like anyone in old money by the way guys that is four stone four stone in four months that is just outrageous debbie brand new clothes new wardrobe send me the bill yeah <laughs> okay that, that's yeah. recorded that's oh, recorded, recorded. <laughs> no escape now um i mean that's massive what you've achieved and have yeah. you noticed any other, well, you, you mentioned straight away with the grandkids and guarding hopping in the beach and obviously hopping in the sea yeah. rather than spectating and now participating. But what else, what else has been translated from you having lost that weight? As in what else do you now find easier to do? Um, I, I clean Airbnb rentals, um, not solely, but that's one of the things I do. And some of them are set up for so many people that to actually physically get between bunks, to change them, um, crawling around beds because they put the biggest bed possible in a very tight space, but they don't consider the person who has to change the linens and, and things like that. Um, or just, you know, cleaning for guests coming in. And um, I can, I used to have to be able to crawl. They've got these triple bunks and I'd have to get up in the bunk to change them. So imagine being on your hands and knees trying to put a fitted sheet around the, the mattress and it, it just doesn't work. And now I don't have to, I can just slide between them and, and make them. And, you know, so that might seem small, but man, it, it speeds up the process. Um, I can, the biggest one um, would take me probably two hours to make up all the beds and things like that. And then course clean it after but um but i'm doing that in a little over an hour so makes a huge difference and then the whole getting up early thing you know you create you gain three hours in your day two to three hours that you just start and when i start that early i'm you know have my breakfast have my coffee and then i'm, I'm ready to go but i've got like 45 minutes <laughs> till i have to be somewhere so um those are just those are really practical things right well absolutely like we can always make more money but we can't make more time which is why time is so valuable even yeah. and if that's done on a daily basis over a week over a month over a year it's it's massive yeah and 
most importantly, what makes you feel now, Debbie, that all of these results aren't just going to be short-lived? What makes you genuinely believe that it is sustainable? Well, as I mentioned before, as far as the eating plan goes, it's not like I'm making anything special. I really haven't changed the way that I buy my food when I go to shop. I will look at labels a little bit more to make sure that you know, I'm just conscious of sodium and things like that because other things that have happened is my blood pressure has returned to normal. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Right, pause, pause. Where's the yeah. pause? I mean, Debbie, you fly through these wins like they're nothing, and I want you to take credit for these. And I'm sure you feel uncomfortable, but um, um, I don't care. I don't care because you should be really proud. That is massive. That is huge. Statistically speaking, you've added nine years onto your life by doing that. That is right. absolutely phenomenal. I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, and other things aren't hurt, like knees. Again, hauling laundry up and down multiple flights of stairs. The knees are fine going up and down flights with laundry hampers, things like that. I'm still running is still an if just because of there's actual damage there but um the walking up hills you know things like that ladders uh fine so sustainable the, the food thing is one thing um because it that's normal it's you go to the store and you don't have to go down special aisles you don't have to go search for a special food um, other than in canada we have different food items than you do in the uk so it's it's interesting trying to substitute yeah. but basically it's normal food but you're just choosing the right ones and the right combinations of food so that's definitely sustainable it's nothing i'm not buying anything new or extra or waiting for it to arrive in the mail it's just no posh ingredients <laughs> yeah yeah no um that definitely is and then i've seen over you know 15 16 weeks I've seen, you know, weight loss come off consistently and then stop a little bit and then pick up again. So, you know, it stops a little bit, then Froth gets a frantic <laughs> telegram message like, oh, no, what do I do? And he calmly reassures me and said, hey, just give it a few days. And if we have to tweak something, we will. So the concept of tweaking something are just little minor changes. And that's sustainable. I can I can handle that. Um, and as long as you know my knees and my ankles hold out, I mean, what's not sustainable about walking? I have done very little cardio over the 16 weeks, and yet it it still worked. But because I can walk and walk and walk and walk, and then of course the workouts. But um, so it's for me, it's sustainable. It it's not. It's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Oh, Debbie. I mean, and I'm having fun. I love it. I know. And speaking of which, you've got a fan club here. So you have Debbie. Oh. So Leon is here. How have you dealt with drinking three liters of water a day? So question for you, Debbie. How mm -hmm. have you managed to drink three liters of water a day? Um, that hasn't that really hasn't been a struggle. However, um, what I try to do is I have two big glasses of water. First thing when I, I take my vitamins, first thing when I get up, I leave a water glass or two by the bathroom sinks and my vitamins are there. So I chug those to start in the morning and then I immediately fill it up again. I've done the, I have a, a glass, it's a 16 ounce glass. Yeah. At the beginning, I would put rubber bands on it and move the rubber bands down as I, you know, to count. Yeah. Um, but then I got these just giant water bottles and I filled them all the night before. So when there's no more water left in the bottles, I've had, you know, lots, but I am constantly, I probably, to be honest, I probably drink it a little bit too fast. I would prefer just to take this and chug it rather than just keep sipping it. Yeah. I know that sipping it is better so it just doesn't all leave <laughs> in a hurry um but it, it is a challenge but i think having something visual like this is the water and you go oh how am i going to drink that but you know if every time you come into the kitchen you drink like down that far or i have I'll always have a water bottle in the car 
I'm always thirsty when I'm working. So even in, it's harder in the winter in Canada when it's so cold to drink a lot of water, but it's still doable. And you get in the habit of it. You, you soon have a thirst reflex and you know you need to take a drink or you, if you're not drinking, your body tells you. Hell of a woman, hell of a woman. You're <laughs> way, way stronger than you give yourself credit for in so many ways, in so many ways. And look, Kate Stranks is here. You're my hero, mom. Any hey, that's what she's saying. Those you don't know, Kate is Debbie's daughter, an incredible human as well. Any words for Kate? I'm jealous because she signed up for Tough Mudder. <laughs> what? You mean she's coming over? Oh, I didn't know. Well, she oh she posted that, so I assume that was it. Oh, yeah. yes. That's a massive <laughs> win. Well, it said now on live, so it has to happen. <laughs> Kate, you've seen it here now. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Kate. Oh, I'm delighted. I know that she was going to sign up, but if I get her over in the UK and get to meet her in person with Edward, that'd be even better. So those of you who don't know, we're doing Tough Mudder for charity. But Debbie, you know what? We could crowbar you in there, but you in a suitcase, <laughs> all the weight that you're losing. There's no reason why you wouldn't fit in one of the stage. You're absolutely. I will flying. definitely be there in spirit if I can't actually get there. So. <laughs> I hear you. Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Jeez, this is just making me happier and happier. My face <laughs> sore from smiling. And I guess I should take this, I should say that to tell Kate, I'm very proud of her and what she is doing. And uh, she, she is working out at the, the, the end of a storage container now. That's where the, that's what her gym is. So, you know, she's going at it. <laughs> See that? No excuses. There's always a way. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> and look, Debbie, at the moment, I'm sure there'll be people watching this. And the biggest thing that we see now is self-doubt. It's not that they don't believe in what we do. They don't believe in themselves, which to be fair is understandable if you've spent decades trying things that don't work on the long term. So what would you say to someone, Debbie, who's on the fence, but who's a little bit scared, but just doesn't have that self-belief just yet? I think a lot of the fear comes from assuming that you have to do it by yourself like maybe other things you've tried, it's on your own and maybe not a lot of support from people around you because they might think, oh, well, yeah, here's the next thing. Let's see how this one works or whatever, how long it lasts. But I think with this program, you have to realize that you're not by yourself. I mean, look at the group on Facebook. Um, look at the encouragement. I haven't seen one negative other than from somebody who's making a post, a uh, comment or, I mean, the support is there. And I am just a normal 63 year old person who has fought her weight all her life, especially in the last years where your activity level decreases. So if I can do it and I'm just a normal person, if I can choose to just listen to what I'm told, just work the program, have a little bit of faith, then it will work. So it doesn't matter where you are, how much weight you have to lose, how bad a shape you're in, how long it's been since you lifted anything more than a dinner fork. Um, it works because it's sound and it's it's based on science and the support is there. The support's amazing. The encouragement, the, those, the, the people that don't let you get away with um, saying something negative or that, you know, I'm not sure that I can handle that or whatever. They're, they're just there for you. We're all there for you. Oh, stop, Debbie. Amazing. And you're one of those people too. I've seen you on the inner circle pulling everybody else up and they have a tough day. So again, try and take the credit. You're like me. You hate a compliment. <laughs> you hate a compliment. But Debbie, honestly, you should be so proud of yourself. I... I am proud of what I, I'm accomplishing, but I'm also realizing that it's, it's never, it's never going to happen by yourself. Like you talk to anybody who succeeds at anything, um, they need to be humble enough to admit that they needed help and they looked for help and they got help in the right place. And that's what I found here. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for your time and your words. I mean, everyone's commenting here. You're inspiring. Lots of people. Diane loves this woman. She says, Sadie was here. So, so inspiring. I mean, 
literally have to try and scroll down the folds to find all the comments. So they <laughs> have made more of a difference now in the last 20 minutes than you probably realize. And you're doing it. You're going to keep doing it. And it has been such a pleasure. We're only getting started. And Debbie, thank you for coming on. And you just, you keep doing you. You keep working, okay? I Have will a, keep at it. Keep at it. Keep All at right. it. Have a wonderful night, Debbie. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, okay. everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.